Welcome to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces, lesson number one, example number 3a. And what I'm doing in this example is, I'm doing example number three, except instead of using the UBC, which I, I did write a little note on the last video, that under uh, a comment, I guess, saying that the UBC is really no longer used. Um, you might find somebody out there that does, but typically, since 2000, what has been take, taken over is the IBC, uh, which is the International Building Code, and it. I think going through the UBC is 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 worth it, just to know. Hey, you know you need to know which which uh, code you're following to, to remember. Hey, that's just another way to do it. And if for some reason you didn't have anything, that might be an easier way, and you could say, okay, well if I remember that equation, I'm just gonna use that anything over a certain amount of pitch how many degrees anything over 20 degrees I'm going to, going to subtract by that amount so once again watch, watch example number 3a if you want to go through the UBC way of doing it but as I said before ever since 2000 a bunch of other I think it was the UBC and some other groups got together and they made the IBC and the what the IBC says is it's chapter seven or I'm I apologize. The IBC pretty much directly references A I'm gonna write this down. It directly references A S C E seven. And then it, it goes about with a map of which it actually replicates the map which is an ASCE seven. And ASCE seven is a load book. It has all a bunch of loads. So what I'm going to do is directly go to ASCE 7. I'm going to well, let's go up here and do IBC. This is the IBC. That's what that 3A is. I, I'm making this up, by the way. It's not in your your Kaplan book. All right. So the ASCE 7. We're going to go ahead and assume the same assumptions: snow load of 30 psf and a pitch of 35 degrees. So what you do? Hopefully you have an ASCE 7. If you do not. I apologize. There's really no, it's a lot harder to follow. I, I can't just tell you how to do it because there's a lot of charts and and whatnot. And until I get permissions, I'm not going to go ahead and throw up any pictures on there. But the snow loads is chapter seven. I'll just go ahead and write here, chapter seven, chapter seven, and that's snow loads. And what? What the ASC7 does is it does this. Yeah, it says you have the PG and then you have a ground load. And then it has a map. And I'm not going to do an extensive... I'm just going to go over this very quickly. So don't feel flustered like, oh, wow, I have no idea what he was saying. You're, you're really not supposed to. You need to have the code on this to understand all the ins and outs. Um, so don't feel bad if, if I'm going through this quickly. That's kind of what I'm meaning to do. And I will do videos on this in its entirety later. And hopefully I can get those tables to be published on here. And it shouldn't be a problem. Anyways, so what you... The, the basis is a ground snow load. And that's PG. And you get these from the maps. And you'll actually see that in the IBC. Go to that map. You get a PG. That's your ground load. You figure it out. In this case... We're assuming 30, 30 PSF. Where I live is in the Kansas City area in Missouri, and we have 20 PSF. And those are pretty easy to find. Um, it's a giant map in this in this book. But if you do have the I, uh, the ASCE7, I'm looking at ASCE7. What year is this? I believe it's 05. Yes, it is 05. And I'm sure they have a newer one, but this is the one I have right now, so this one we're going with. And on page 84 and page 85, you, you see the map of the snow loads. And for instance, with 30 PSF, we could be... Oh, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, I'm guessing. It would be in 30 PSF. So that's one place. Let's say we're in Madison and 30 PSF. All right, moving on. So, 
that's that's how you get your, your your initial PG, and that's your ground load. So if you're flat sitting on the ground, that's how much you're going to get as your load. And then you move on to a flat roof snow load, which is PF. So if you have a flat roof snow load, it in the the uh, equation for this is 0 0.7 CE CT I and then we use the PG. PG is this PG. And you're like, oh, wow, that got confusing. And you say that, and you'd be right. It gets a little bit more confusing. What these are is the CE, and I'm not going to write all this stuff down. I will do that in another video, but I'm trying to do this for a quick. So CE is an exposure factor. CT is a thermal factor. I is an importance factor. And then PG is PG. And when I, uh, I'm going to go ahead, importance factor is what type of building. Usually if you have, let's say it's a stadium or something with tons of people, it'll be more. And to get that, you go to table 7.2, which is also on page, pardon me, I'm just flipping through. 7.2 is on page 93. No, 92, sorry about that. Page 92, and you'll see that. Did I say exposure factor? Yeah, that's not in my... I thought I was saying important factor. Let's go to exposure factor. And exposure factor actually gets... They, they, they go to table 7-2, and they explain that, but they also reference the wind load section, which explains the exposure factors, which most of the time, I would say, use a 0.9. So we're going to assume... 0 0.9 then that that is fully exposed terrain B and once again this is why it's important to have this code because it gets confusing so we're gonna say CE equals 0 0.9 CT is once again it is our thermal factor and usually I believe it's a, a 1.0 but you go to table 7-3 it says all structures except so anything that's not like a warehouse anything that's slightly heated will be the CT equals 1.0. So you can go ahead and assume that for the most part. Um, for the most part, of course. And you have your importance factor. An important factor, you go to seven, table 7-4, seven and I believe that we are category 2, typically, which is a 1.0. And this is banquet halls. Anything that you're going to have a lot of people, you want to use the I of 0.8. Other than that, warehouses, you can actually go up where there's going to be zero, you know, storage facilities where there's no people, maybe a, a storage tank where there's no hu human life is going to be category four with a 1.2. And uh, in category three, 1.1 is something like a warehouse. I'm And once again, I'm just kind of going over this. And this is why you want to have your, your, your code and where you can go through that and justify it to yourself. I'm just spouting stuff off the top of my head without looking at anything. So don't trust me. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for this. We, I think we have made all, all, all of our assumptions. 0 0.9, our CT is 1, our I is 1, and our PG is 30. So as you can see, it's just 0 0.7 times 0 0.9 times 30. And I would say for about 90, maybe... 70% of your buildings, this is probably going to be true. The 0 0.7, 0 0.9 times your ground load. And that's that's a major assumption. So, And we get 18.9 PSF. So that's our reduction right away. That's what we get. So that's that's good. We're, we're already down from 30. And then, on top of that, that's, remember that's a flat roof. PF is flat. Then, if you want to get a sloped roof, I'm going to go ahead and switch colors. It's PS. And that starts at 7.4. And as you can see, PS, if you have your code book, equals CS PF. PF comes from right there. CS. CS is a roof slope factor. So this kind of depends on what kind of, how slippery it will be for the snow to slide off. And you find the CS, obviously the PF is right there, 
and the CS you get from below. It's 7.4.1 through 7.4.4, and it says warm roof slope factor, and that's what we had we want. It says for warm roofs, CT is less than one as determined, and that's what we said. We said CT is one or less, less than or equal to one, and it says with an unobstructed slippery surface will, that will allow snow to slide. We'll assume yes. The roof slope factor shall be determined using the dashed line in figure 7-2-A. So, so we go 7-2-A, figure 7-2-A, and which is on page 86. And I'm going to go what is our degrees? And you can see that 7-2-A has your roof slope. We're going to say all other surfaces. We're going to go down and use our 35 degrees. So that's what, 40. So go halfway between 30, 30 and 35. Or 30 and 40, rather. Go up. And it looks like it's about 1.0. So, the CS is 1.0 at 35 degrees, and that's not a very steep pitch. Actually, I guess it is. Well, let me think. Oh, actually, 35 is about 0.9-ish. Yeah, let's say 0.9. And so we're going to say CS equals 0 0.9. My pencil that I'm using right there to figure that out was not as straight as I'd like to be. That's all right. So, let me get my calculator again. And we're saying 18.9 times 0.9, and you get 17.01, and I'll just say 17.0 PSF. So as you can see, we started with 30 PSF, but given our inclination, we were able to reduce that to 17.0 PSF, which is about half. So when you ask, wait what, it's 18 PSF reduction, so it's over half. And that is uh, the general snow load. And that's for a, a very simple roof where you have both sides. Um, you know, let's just say it's a house for simplicity where it's pretty fully exposed, there's nothing else. And once again, this, this, this IBC code does get a little bit different. You have to get into those thermal factors and the importance factors and read through that. I'm not going to go through that this time, but you need to read through it and justify yourself that this is the, the, the correct CTs and CEs and Is. But they also have um, instances in this where there's partial loading, where if you only have one side or if you have uneven, or if you have a roof that looks like this, or I can just, actually, let me read through them real quick. It says, partial loading, you might continuous beam systems, unbalanced roof loadings, it says unbalanced snow loads for hip and gable roofs, unbalanced snow loads for curved roofs, unbalanced snow loads for multiple folded plates, sawtooth, barrel fault roofs. So this is an example of kind of a sawtooth roof. It's more like that. Sorry. Like that-ish. I've seen those before. That type of roof. So they have all dome roofs. You have all types of different roofs. In addition to this, you also will have certain types of roof that are like so, where they are unbalanced, not unbalanced, but uh, this is a lower roof. You know, you have one higher, one lower. And therefore, this will actually, you might see drifts, and it also accounts for drifts. So this is a pretty intensive code. It's not, I wouldn't say difficult, it's just, for lack of a better word, it's intricate. And also, you also have instances where, let's say you had a roof up here, and you have to account for the sliding snow that comes down, and ponding, and existing roofs, they have a little... Uh, 7.12 is about existing roofs. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things, and you need to take everything into account. You need to just read over the IBC code for snow. But given the general, simple, simplest terms I can, assuming it's a normal, just straight old, like a, a simple roof, 17.0 PSF is our reduction. So to answer our question, the answer is yes, and our new load is 17. 
0.0 PSF. All right, I hope that was a, a good introduction to the IBC code.